One of the most complex things in all of golf tends to be the wrist angles. And when you look for advice on how to get better at golf, there seems to be a lot of advice about what to do with the wrist. But when we understand wrist, it tends to be very complex due to the fact that the wrists are very quick, very fast, and very twitchy. Therefore, when we think about a little bit of wrist, we tend to get a lot, and a little bit of wrist will make a big change in ball flight. So how can we take a very complex subject and make it much simpler? So when we start the conversation on wrist angles, generally it devolves into release patterns and we try to oversimplify a very complex subject matter. But when we talk about release pattern, typically we want to think about the static lie of a golf club and how that relates to the dynamic lie of a golf club. So what's the static and dynamic lie of a golf club in the first place? Well, when we take this golf club and we sole it on the ground to get it nice and flat and we get the sole into the ground and flush, we create an angle between the club shaft and the ground. And that's commonly referred to as the lie angle of the golf club. So with a seven iron, it tends to be somewhere between 60 to 63 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark. And that's generally what we're looking at in terms of the static lie. But when we measure on TrackMan, we get a dynamic lie as well, which is referencing what the club is looking like to, at impact. So the dynamic lie can either be shallower than the original, or it can be steeper than the original. Either one can happen. But what we wanna understand is how do you consistently deliver the club to the ball? Because what we tend to see is that the dynamic lie for golfers tends to be rather consistent, which tends to lead to a particular ball flight which they struggle to adjust. So generally speaking, we know that the static lie angle of a seven iron is between 60 and 63 degrees. So if we're on a track man and we look at the dynamic lie that we're producing and we see that it's much lower than let's say 60 degrees and maybe 57 to 60 degrees, we would know that that golf club is coming into the golf ball much too flat with a shallow dynamic lie relative to the static. So what could be some of the reasons for that? The most common reason for a shallower dynamic lie is generally because we're losing the stack in our posture and we're moving our left hip back and away from the ball like this. So I'm actually moving the lead hip away from the ball. And like we talked about in an earlier video, we actually want to feel like we stay more vertically stacked and twist around that lead hip, not simply move the lead hip away. But when the lead hip moves away, because the lower grape is moving away from the ball, the upper grape moves towards. And if my chest is moving towards the ball from the top of my swing, we can see that I'm getting lower to the ground, which is why my dynamic lie is gonna be much closer to the ground, creating a shallower angle than we originally started with. So that's great, but if you don't find yourself having a too shallow dynamic lie, and you find yourself on the opposite end of the spectrum, meaning that you're above 63 and maybe 65 to 70, we commonly see that with people who struggle with club delivery, what that commonly is because of is due to the fact that when these golfers get to the top of their swing, they tend to look more like this. And they tend to have a lot of extension in the lead wrist to begin with. And then as they try to bring the club down and get it behind them, the club works more into extension. I'm sorry, the lead wrist works more into extension. And now we can see that the wrist gets really jammed. And what happens when that lead wrist goes into extension, as we can see, is that the left shoulder can't rotate out of the way. And now the handle is really going vertically up, increasing the dynamic lie. So that's what tends to lead to having that dynamic lie much more vertical and tends to lead to a lot of pain in the wrist where it feels like it's getting jammed. So we've talked about dynamic lie in great deal and what it is. So now, how does that actually affect the wrist angles? What's changing there? Well, we can use this simple Frisbee here to learn how our wrists kind of move in time and space and where a lot of us tend to run into issues with our wrist angles. So if you imagine that you're holding a steering wheel at nine and three, maybe you're taking your driver's test, right? You're doing a nice job here of controlling the car at nine and three. When we have to make a hard left, what we tend to see is that people will work the steering wheel keeping their lead wrist more inside the wheel, which creates a lot of extension in that wrist. So I'm gonna to turn to the side now. 
Okay, and we can see that we're working the wrist down and inside the steering wheel. And eventually I get to a point where I can no longer turn it left. For our left-handed friends out there, I'll turn around the other way. So it would be this way for our left-handed friends, right? Okay, so we can see that I get it turned and now I just can't do anything with that. Okay, so what we wanna do here is we wanna maintain leverage with our hands so that we can control and turn the wheel. So now I'm gonna actually move my left shoulder a little more out, my left elbow a little bit more out, and now I'm gonna keep my rest, wrist more flexed and on the outside of the wheel. And now we're gonna see that I can continually turn and turn and turn, and eventually, that works into a really nice finish for our golf swing, right? So now we're able to continue to rotate the shoulder around the spine and get to a nice finish position without getting jammed and the golf club wanting to move away from the body. So from down the line, okay, if I maintain leverage with my left wrist and I keep it on the outside of the wheel, now I'm able to really easily turn my body through. However, if I'm coming into impact and I get into extension and I get on the inside of the wheel, my left shoulder locks. And now what it wants to do is work more up vertically. And we could see that I would be creating a much deeper dynamic lie. So the Frisbee here really gives us a nice feel of maintaining leverage with that left wrist. And what many of us will find is that when we start with the golf club in our hands, if we think about holding that steering wheel at nine and three, we're gonna need a little more neutral grip there. So we can see that this is gonna be easy for me to stay on the outside of the wheel. Okay, once again, wrist on the outside. Very easy for me to get that finished nice and low and maintain a nice dynamic lie versus, okay, getting working more into extension where everything jams up and wants to finish more that way, face is more open, and now I'm tending to get the ball starting more right with more loft, which really takes the power away from that shot. So we can use a simple lie loft machine to determine the static lie of a golf club, and then we can relate that to our dynamic lie to understand which one of these drills and feels is best gonna work for us. But essentially, we wanna make sure that we're not getting the lead wrist working into an extension pattern. So if you think of release pattern, if you think of you know all three motions of the lead wrist, you can get really lost in that. But what we wanna make sure we're doing is we wanna make sure we're keeping a hold of the wheel because we wanna be able to rotate our arms and use our arms together. That's what really is key here. If I can keep the wheel at nine and three, it's nice and steady. But the minute that I start trying to turn arms different directions, I'm very quickly an inexperienced driver and my insurance rates are going up. So for us to keep the ball on the road and going far, it's really, really important that we try to do a nice job of managing the lie angle through the swing, which makes it a dynamic lie angle. And that's really gonna be nice and helpful for us finding that nice finish and not creating a lot of pain and ouchie in the wrist. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and until next time, keep grinding.